So today we're going to adapt a soft pretzel roll, or to make rolls, I should say. Uh, it's a soft pretzel, and we're going to turn them into sandwich rolls. So uh, I have my ingredients all uh, measured out. So we're going to start with uh, the water, which is one and a half cups of water. And then we're gonna put the um, active dry yeast in and let it develop a little bit, okay? And along with that, and the dry yeast, I had approximately, uh, there was like uh, two teaspoons and a tablespoon of dry yeast. So one tablespoon, two teaspoons dry yeast, and two tablespoons of uh, brown sugar. So we have that all in the mixing bowl and we're gonna leave that sit a little bit and uh, start to bloom. Okay, so now that we've left our uh, yeast uh, in the water develop a little bit, you can see some bubbling action going on. Uh, we're gonna put in, I, if you notice, I have two different uh, beaters or one's a beater and the other's a dough hook. I like to bring my um, dough to a batter before I incorporate all the flour and turn it into a dough and knead it. So we're gonna put the um, beaters in and now we're gonna start adding a little bit of flour. Now what, let me stop for a minute. We have beer here, we're gonna put some beer in it. We have butter, and we have salt. I like to put the salt in towards the end of the process because the salt will retard the, uh, the growth of the yeast and we'll slow down the uh, proofing process. So, we're gonna turn the mixer on. Oh, oh, we're gonna put the splash shield on first because we will have a mess if we don't. It's a great mixer. Uh, you can feed everything from the top. You don't have to worry about uh, tipping the head back and, and making a mess. So, we're gonna turn that on and we're gonna put some, we got it mixed up there a little bit. We're gonna take part of the flour and we're just going to dump it into the mixer. And then we're gonna work that up into a little bit of a batter. Okay, and now we're gonna incorporate the beer and do more of the same. And a little bit more flour. And you know, when you're baking, it's always a judgment call on on how much flour versus how much liquid. I mean, you, you measure out your liquid, you measure out your flour, and depending on the day, depending on the humidity, it may or may not be correct. So uh, a little bit of experience gets you to that. And now you can see we have a really heavy batter. And now we're gonna start putting in our butter. And we have two tablespoons of butter, cubed and at room temperature. And we're gonna put that in there. Like that. And I also am gonna put in one tablespoon of malt syrup. Now, you notice I don't have it measured out, but we're gonna guess here a bit because you see it's a mess, it's like molasses, but it is malt syrup. And if you measure it out, you're gonna get most of the stuff staying on the spoon or the measuring device. So, we got that. And now we're going to put in some more flour. I took that out just to make it a little bit easier to put the flour in. Uh, I messed up there a bit. We want to take this out. And now we're going to switch over to a dough hook. And we'll put the dough hook in place. Our shield. And we're going to start it. And then we're going to put in one of the last ingredients, which is the salt. We have the salt in. It looks like it's a pretty good consistency. We're gonna shut it down and we're gonna leave it rest for about five minutes and leave all the liquids incorporated into the dry ingredients or vice versa, and then we'll be back. Okay, we're back and we've allowed the dough and all the ingredients to rest a little bit, maybe 10 minutes. 
and it helps uh, get things moving and it uh, incorporates the dry ingredients into and the wet ingredients so blah 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 now we're going to knead the dough so i'm going to give you two methods of kneading in case you don't have a mixer that will handle dough a lot of mixers do not uh, this one handles huge amounts of flour and water dough. I mean, I can bring this mixer almost up to the top and uh, knead the dough. But we're going to do another alternative uh, method of uh, kneading. So we're going to knead this for a little bit. And the dough should be and is, it's slightly sticky. And it's a soft dough. So that's what we want it to be. If you get the dough more firm, then the bread is going to be more firm. And, uh, and more dough. So, as you can see, that's mixing it rather well and kneading the dough. It's cleaned the side of the bowl on, on its own. So, after we knead the dough, or finish kneading the dough, then we're going to divide the dough into uh, portion size for the size roll we're going to make. Today, we're gonna to do about a four ounce uh, portion of dough. I'm gonna take a little flour now and put it on the counter and also on my hands. So I'm gonna remove the dough from the mixer. And as you can see, you just take the bowl off of this mixer and put your hand in there and the dough comes out re relatively simple and your bowl is almost clean and that's what should happen when a dough is properly mixed. So, the other method of kneading the dough is you wanna take like this and bring half of the dough back. You can either use flour on your fingers and or you can use oil on your fingers, but you wanna keep rotating it and pull half of it to the center and just keep sort of pinching it to knead the dough. And you wanna do that maybe 20, 30 times. After you do it a while, you will feel, get the feel of what's right and how the gluten is developing in the dough. So, oh, the flour I used today was a, was a all-purpose uh, bread flour. There are different uh, types of flour and uh, the, the difference is typically in how much, what the gluten content is. The gluten content in the flour we're using today is 12.5%. Let me explain where we're at and where we're going. So we have our dough and we're leaving it rest a while. And in the meantime, I've turned my oven on to 400 degrees. Uh, the next process is to divide the dough into the correct uh, weight to make the sandwich rolls. We're gonna make basically the size of a hamburger roll uh, because they want to use it for a pulled pork barbecue. So that's what I'm making these for, for my, uh, uh, for my daughter today. And, uh, so, but then to get that pretzel color and taste, we're going to divide the dough, form it into that sandwich roll, and then we're going to allow it to proof a little bit. And then we're going to dip it into a solution of lye water. Yes, lye water. You can use baking soda in water, uh, but it's not the same thing the professionals use lye water. Now you can buy lye water or lye online and what you wanna buy is a food grade lye. It's very um, caustic and you have to wear rubber gloves and be very careful when you're using it. So we're gonna let this dough sit here for a little bit. I'm going to cover it we're gonna leave it uh, proof for a little while, and then we are going to divide it up into the portions that we are going to use. Okay, so now we've let the dough rise a little bit, and it's ready to divide into our portions. So what we're going to do, I have a portion scale, and you get used to this, and it becomes pretty much second nature after you do a few. We're gonna do four ounces, and that's way off. So Let's see where we're at. That was over six ounces. That's 4.6. Now we're gonna stay at four and a half ounces. I think I was a little off on my judgment. So we'll go four and a half ounces. 
And the first thing we're gonna do is one step at a time, we're gonna divide it, we're gonna divide it into the portions. In professional bakeries, they have a device called a uh, dough divider, and you weigh out uh, you weigh out the ball of dough that goes in it, and it cuts it into thirty or thirty-six equal portions based on the uh, size of the dough ball you put in. It sort of smashes it, and knife blades come down and cut it and you have it divided easy. But we don't have that luxury at home, so we have to divide them. And the last one, is that something? It came out so we didn't have any scraps. It's all done. So now we have them, we have, let's see, we have three, four, eight, 12, 14, we have 14 rolls. Is what we're gonna have. So now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take each piece of dough and we're gonna take, and we're gonna pull this, the edge to the center and then turn it upside down. This is just the first part of this process. We'll bring it all to the center like that. The other technique you could use, you can just take your hands and bring the center in like this. And that still does a pretty decent job. So you could use either technique that you want, but you're forming it into a ball is basically what you want to do. And again, I'll go back to the other technique to show you, just in case you can do it like this. And we're not finished yet. We have one more process before we form it into the roll. And you'll see that in just a minute. So, we're almost finished with this process, and now we're going to compress it or round it into a perfect ball. And we're gonna do that by taking one of these balls of dough, we're gonna take it between our hands, and we're gonna drag it on the table, something like that. And you just sort of drag the bottom, and it rolls everything in, and when you're done, you have a perfect dough ball. So just drag it. If you have flour on there, it's gonna slide and it's not gonna do what we want it to do. Oil actually does work. If there's a little oil in there, it seems to give enough friction that it does still round. And you can see they're getting almost perfectly round. The next step is we're gonna sort of flatten these into a round roll. And then we're gonna put them on a baking tray lined with parchment. But we're not only gonna line it with parchment, we're gonna spray the parchment with a vegetable oil spray. Typically, you wouldn't have to do that process, but we're gonna dip these rolls, as I said earlier, in that lye water solution. And when you do that, it causes the uh, rolls to stick even to the parchment paper. Now see, I have a little flour on that and I'm not getting the friction on the counter. And marble is absolutely fantastic to work with, with dough. If you see in the old Italian pizza shops and uh, they all have Italian marble to work on. It's just, I don't know why, but it, it's just amazing to work on it. So, we're gonna rest there for a second, let them rest, and then we're gonna divide them or put them into the shape and put them on the baking trays and allow them to proof. One more time, we have the oven heating up to 400 degrees, and we're gonna dip them in the lye water bath and put, them, put some pretzel salt on the top and put them in the oven and see what we come up with. Okay, so uh, I already formed one uh, tray of rolls and I uh, covered them with some plastic wrap. And now we're gonna do another one. And basically what I do, a couple tricks I found over uh, while well, in doing this, is I'll take and, and either wet or spray the pan with some water and then put my parchment on it. And that sort of keeps it, uh, it keeps it stuck to the pan. 
Uh, I did already spray that with some vegetable spray, and now we're gonna form the, the roll. And so basically like that, and put it on our, our tray. Do not turn the roll over. You wanna use the side up that is up, okay? And the uh, saran or the uh, saran, uh, the plastic wrap is uh, to prevent the skin uh, from, of the dough from drying out because when it dries out, then it, it uh, prohibits uh, the um, growth in the oven or uh, the proper term is oven spring. One thing I will tell you, uh, so keep this in mind. Once you put that salt on that roll, the um, lifespan of the roll is shortened by days. It really, really is, uh, you wanna do them fresh almost for the time uh, that you're gonna use them or so before, because I don't know what the reaction is, but the salt does uh, allow them to get uh, stale very quickly. So the next process will be dipping them in the lye water, sprinkling them with salt and uh, uh, baking them. So not too far off from the finished product. Now uh, I am getting ready to dip the um, buns into the lye water. And you can see, here's the lye I use, sodium hydroxide, and it is a food grade lye. I think I got it on Amazon, it was no big deal. So, but that and then I have my pretzel salt in here. I just took an old spice shaker and uh, put some salt in it so I have the big holes in the top to put the pretzel salt onto the... And I've already measured out my lye. And honestly, you should be wearing uh, goggles when you do this. Um, but uh, I'm gonna pour that into the... Pour that into the water. Okay. And we're gonna now transfer the rolls to the water and then sprinkle them with salt and then they're gonna to go to the oven. So, I'm gonna just lay, lay that into the water for a few seconds. And I have this handy apparatus here to take them out. It seems to work good and you can put it in with them, save you from splashing 10 to 15 seconds. They wanna be in there. And this is what's gonna give it that rich brown color and also the flavor. So, but you want to be very careful in the process. You don't want to see you get hurt doing this. So, and you see I have the gloves on in case I would put my hands in there. But right now, this is what we're doing. And we're gonna, I'm gonna do a whole tray and then sprinkle them all at once. Now we're gonna take and put the salt on them. And you can judge the amount of salt you put on, want to put on. I don't think you want to put a lot on them. But And now we're going to go to the oven with them. Don't always go by the times that are set forth in, in any recipe. Every oven is different, and you have to gain that uh, judgment. The more you bake, the better you'll get, the better your judgment will be, and you'll know when they're ready. The oven is already prepared at 400 degrees. And... We're gonna put them right in the oven and we're good to go. Now to check out and see the fruits of our labor. So we're gonna to go to the oven and they should be ready to come out. So let's see what we've got. Oh my God, look at that. Don't they look amazing? And they smell like pretzels. I guess they should since we make pretzel rolls. And here's our second tray. So now, all we need to do is transfer them over to the um, transfer them over to the, the cooling rack, and I'm just going to get a, a towel so I don't take the skin off of my fingers. And there we go. Okay, so we're just going to put them on there and let it cool. So, a successful day of baking. If you want to learn more, if you want to see more. You can watch me at Rome on the Range on Instagram or also Rome on the Range on YouTube. So 
Again, it's Rome on the Range. Thank you.